Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, you are a surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clerkship rotation and the surgical trainees. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. In this series of videos, I am talking about the scrotal swelling, the mind maps in scrotal swelling. So in this episode, I will be talking about the varicose seal especially only the highlighting the mind map. So what are the various causes for these scrotal swellings? <clears throat> Broadly, you can divide it into acute painful conditions and chronic painless conditions. The acute painful conditions are tarsal testis, acute epididyma ochitis, tarsal of testicular appendages. The chronic painless conditions can be divided into cystic swellings like the hydrocele, epididymalsis, spermatocele, and varicocele, and solid swellings like chronic epididyma ochitis and testicular uh, tumor. So this is a diagnostic algorithm for scrotal swelling. So broadly, we can divide it into two groups. Those patients the upper limit is not palpable. That means the get above the swelling is not possible. And if the swelling is also having cough impulse, it is reducible and testis is palpable. And if it is opaque, then we are dealing with a case of hernia. Suppose the upper limit is not palpable, but the patient is not having any cough impulse. The swelling is not reducible, testis is not palpable separately, and if the swelling is also translucent, okay, we are dealing with a case of infantile hydrocele. Suppose the upper limit of the uh, uh, upper limit of the swelling or upper border of the swelling is palpable, that is, get above the swelling is possible, then you have to look for whether the testis and epididymis are palpable or testis and epididymis are not palpable. Our epididymal cyst is the testis and epididymis are palpable and it is brilliantly transilimitant also. That is our uh, epididymal cyst and <coughs> if it is a varicocele, the characteristic thing is it will be the bag of appearance will be there and it won't come under these two categories. So this is the main thing in this uh, video. This is the mind map for the varicocele. You know the importance of mind map. So varicocele etiology, if it is primary, the cause is because of incompetent valves. If it is secondary varicocele, patient may have abdominal or pelvic tumors or sometimes there may be retroperitoneal fibrosis or addition, or compression between the iota and superior mesenteric artery. The left renal, the re renal vein will be compressed between the iota and superior mesenteric artery. <coughs> Why it is common on the left side? Because of longer left testicular vein. Left testicular vein enters into the left renal vein in a right angle, loaded sigmoid colon, left testicular artery may be arching over left testicular vein, and another thing is the left renal vein will be compressed between the iota and superior mesenteric artery. These are the reasons why it is more common on the left side. And there are four gradings in this varicocele. Grade one, the varicocele is palpable only on valsalva maneuver. Grade 2, 
varicose seal is palpable without wall salva maneuver. Grade 3, visible, the varicose seal is visible through the scrotal skin. Grade 4, the varicose seal veins are very much dilated and tortuous. Coming to the clinical features, patient may be asymptomatic, no symptoms at all, or patient may have pain on prolonged standing and disappearing on lying down. If you palpate the scrotum, you will have the classical bag of worms feel and bow sign will be positive. That means if you catch hold of this varicose vein between your thumb and fingers and ask the patient to bend forward or the bow, the, the size of the varicose seal will get reduced and this is what is called positive bow sign. And there will be infertility because of increased temperature in the scrotum which is not conducive for the spermatogenesis. These patients will go for infertility. There is no cough impulse, but you can feel the thrill in these patients. If uh, in long-standing cases, there may be testicular hypotrophy or atrophy of the testes. This is the treatment algorithm for varicocele. So algorithm for varicocele management, okay, treatment not recommended in certain categories of the patient, those who are having clinical varicocele with normal seminal parameters, we need not do any treatment. Or subclinical varicocele, no need for any treatment. The female factor not potentially correctable or patients are non-azospermic, then no need for any treatment. Whereas treatment is recommended if patients or adolescents having high-grade varicocele or reduced ipsilateral testicular size, we have to give some treatment, but the aim of the treatment is we have to preserve the testicular growth and the future fertility of this patient. That should be the aim of this treatment. Then the another group is the clinical varicocele with abnormal seminal parameters. This we can divide into two groups, infertile couples attempting to conceive and if the uh, no, with normal female partner or potentially treatable female factor, then you can go ahead and become pregnant but try to improve the seminal parameters, you have to downshift the level of the ART need, need, needness or the necessity for ART, you have to downshift, downshift it. Okay, suppose if this presence of uncorrectable female factor with patient is also azospermia, avoid any invasive testicular sperm retrieval procedures Eventually, you can try the arterial, I mean, pregnancy. If it is non-azospermic also, okay, you can try this. This is a tabular column. This is uh, act as a ready reckoner to clinch the correct diagnosis. So, the, in this column, I have given all the five conditions or our five causes for the scrotal swelling, namely hydrocele, epididymosis, and spermatocele, varicocele, testicular tarsen, and epididyma ocaitis, and testicular carcinoma. So, in these various columns, in the first column, I am discussing about ETO pathogenesis, then history or symptoms, sign here diagnosis, that is the various investigation and treatment. So, you have to read vertically to compare what is the, I mean, the ETO pathogenesis for hydrocele, what is the ETO pathogenesis for varicocele. See, for varicocele, the ETO pathogenesis is idiopathic, that is one thing, or absence of walls 
in uh, uh, abnormal walls uh, uh, in the cars uh, abnormal walls in inside the testicular veins so uh, like that you can read it vertically and you had to compare and contrast between these things and history also so this tabular column will act as a ready reckoner to clinch the correct diagnosis so thank you very much for watching this video if you think that these videos are very useful kindly like this uh, uh, video and share this uh, video in your social media also click the bell button to get notified regarding my latest uploads thank you once again for watching this video let us meet in an yet another episode until then bye bye